Today on Logan Lee Adventures, this is Rome and the Romans who live in it—a city and a people of contrast and effusion. A place that has lived so many different lives in so many different epochs that all it wants to do is exist in eternity according to the wisdom of what it has learned. The lessons are obvious. Life is about to live passionately, excessively, publicly in bars, restaurants, streets, and piazzas. Applying charm and style mixed with a healthy respect for tradition, and today I indulge in it all. Though it was one of the 1,352 fountains in fourth-century Rome, the Trevi Fountain has always stood out from the rest. Some remember the night dip in the film La Dolce Vita. I vividly remember Liz McGuire tossing a coin into the water, a tradition to ensure that you'll return to Rome in the future. Hello, Rome! People have come from all over the world to make a wish and toss their coin in the Trevi Fountain. Now, I won't tell you what I wished for. Last time I was here, four years ago, Trevi Fountain was all under construction, and so to be here now and see it in all of its splendor, hear the water running. Seeing how beautiful the facade is, and just all the little intricate details—it's truly, ah, uh, this feels like magic. The fountain dates back to ancient Roman times, since the construction of Aqua Virgo Aqueduct in 19 BC, that provided water to the Roman baths and the fountains of central Rome. Wandering around the Eternal City at 6 a.m., just as the light is about to come up on top of these buildings, and just how quiet these streets are. All I hear are the water fountains still running, the birds still chirping, and it just feels good to be a solo traveler. After the Trevi Fountain, I came back to my hotel and got Italian breakfast, of course, loads of sweets and meat. And this view. So casual. I'm just strolling, walking in Rome, and oh, look what that guy is! Just right beside me on my morning stroll. This is my Lizzie McGuire moment right now. So wherever I go, I can never go wrong with any views in Rome. Rome's great gladiatorial arena is the most thrilling of the city's ancient sites. Inaugurated in AD 80, the 50,000-seat Colosseum, also known as the Flavian Amphitheater, was originally clad in travertine and covered by huge canvas awning. Inside, the tiered seating encircled the arena itself, built over an underground complex where animals were caged and stage sets prepared. Games involved gladiators fighting wild animals or each other. I was already. Here a while ago with my camera, so I won't be waiting in line again to take you guys in this time. But it goes without saying that this place is a must to explore. Just don't realize how big the Colosseum is until you're right here, right below it, and then look up. What? The Roman forms are surrounded by the sprawl ruins of several grandiose ancient government buildings at the center of the city of Rome. Citizens of the ancient city refer to this space as the Forum Magnum, or simply the Forum. It served as a public area in which commercial, religious, economic, political, legal, and social activities occurred. Quei panachini non più vrai, quel cappello non più vrai. The Domus Aurea was a vast landscape palace built by the Emperor Nero in the heart of ancient Rome after the Great Fire in 64 A.D. that had destroyed a large part of the city and the aristocratic villas on Palatine Hill. 
Now I get to go down underneath to see the decade-long excavation project that's still in progress of this once-to-be magnificent palace. Archaeology adventure. Now. Does Emperor Nero have Okay, confession time. When I was a young boy, I wanted to be an archaeologist because of the excavating work like this one here. Alright, not even when I was a young boy. In fact, right up to applying to university, I still wanted to be an archaeologist. Actually, midway through university, I was contemplating of switching my media studies into it. Spoiler alert, never happened. I ended up becoming a fashion photographer in Amsterdam instead. But here I am in this underground city imagining another time during the life of a Roman and another life in where I could go do digs and archaeological preservation to understand the past. Still working inside. Instead on Saturday and Sunday it is possible to enter. And if you look better to the map you can see there is another color. Why? Because uh, here one time there were structures that belonged to another emperor. Here one time there were areas or storerooms in the past that belonged to the emperor Claudio. Claudio was the stepfather of Nero. I can tell you that this room was more important than the other. Why? Because of the marble. The marble reached that area. Either was the marble more important was the room in the past, okay? This tour was epic but then on an extra bonus i didn't expect was the virtual reality aspect which helped envision what this place fully looked like centuries ago when it was part of rome time for some vr action you can see what part of the virtual reality set looks like from my point of view however this doesn't do it justice at all because it doesn't capture the mood or feeling of what it is like to wear this headset and wander through these great halls. Actually 11 feet underground and above us are all trees and roots and the garden by the Colosseum. See a little pit hole of light up there. Go to the top and this is what on top looks like of course you have to imagine all these tree roots as well going all the way down and taking how many years of excavation just to keep it safe and then uncovering the whole palace Altera della Praccia, also known as Altar of the Fatherland, is the largest national monument in Italy and it was inaugurated by the King Victoria Emmanuel III during the 50th anniversary of unification of Italy. When I first arrived in Rome all those years ago, this was actually the first iconic site in the city that I explored by chance since it was near my accommodation. The monument was to look like a large form, decided to be open to the public in some sort of elevated square in the heart of the capital as you can see from this and standing as a symbol of a united Italy. It's built out of Botticino marble which I think is just otherworldly because even to this day you can see it shimmering in the golden late August sun, a white gem in the middle of the capital. I always wanted to visit this place, and out of all the times in Rome, I've never made my way to the Pantheon, but here I am and guess what, it's completely free entry. The Roman Pantheon is the most preserved and influential building of ancient Rome. It is a Roman temple, dedicated to all the gods of pagan Rome. As the brick stamps on the side of the building reveal, it was built and dedicated between AD 118 8 and 125 can you even just wrap your head around those dates like that is nearing the beginning of civilization it is the best preserved ancient Roman monument. It is a bit of a mystery how the Pantheon managed to survive barbarian raids when all the rest of Roman monuments have been shattered. It turned into a church in 609 AD and has a lot to do with it in later time, but also the structure itself is way ahead of its time. The most fascinating part of the Pantheon is this giant dome with this famous hole on the top the Eye of the Pantheon, or Oculus. The dome was the largest in the world for 
1,300 years and until today, it remains the largest unsupported dome in the world. Manjare, manjare, manjare. Eating is the true passion of the city, the invulnerable religion, at the same time sacred and profane. Food is everywhere. This place right outside the Pentagon has a few samples of things. Such good meat. Look, the changing of the guards. I'm in love with the Roman guards' uniforms. It's so vibrant and in this heat, it's really impressive that they are so composed wearing that. Alright everybody, that's a wrap for Rome. Please subscribe if you haven't already, give this video a like, and leave a comment below. In the next video, Yuru and I reunite, and we kickstart our road trip around Italy, not to be missed. Ciao!